How do you feel when you see these letters? Angry? Confused? Disgusted, perhaps? Chances are you've heard absolutely nothing positive about NFTs. From money laundering to disrespecting and monetizing the dead to stealing artwork to speeding up the literal destruction of this big blue bubble that we all live in. Or maybe you're one of those people that fully support the NFT movement and genuinely believe they have a solidified position in our technological future. Because nothing says future like some ugly fucking monkeys. NFT is an abbreviation. It stands for non-fungible token or non-replaceable token for those that don't know what fungible means. And a token usually refers to a digital asset. You know Bitcoin, that one cryptocurrency that blew up in value in 2017 for no reason. Bitcoin! That's a token. And as well as every other cryptocurrency out there, they're all tokens. Well, these tokens, NFTs, allow you to buy and sell ownership of virtual one-of-a-kind items. These tokens range from images, could be legitimate art or shit smeared on the wall, animated GIFs, songs, tweets, yes, tweets, and even items in a video game, which is the stupidest of all in my opinion. NFTs are non-replaceable digital items turned into cryptocurrency, and despite being non-replaceable, it is possible to own a copy of a pre-existing token akin to a Pokemon trading card, which kind of defeats the purpose, doesn't it? However, an NFT isn't exactly a form of cryptocurrency. NFTs are given life and value by a problematic cryptocurrency within the blockchain called Ethereum. Why is it problematic? I'll explain that later. First, let me briefly explain what the blockchain is. It really isn't all that complicated. Well, it kind of is, but I'll try to put it in a layman's terms. Imagine something like a bank or ledger, a system that securely and privately handles all your online transactions, except that it's public, and everybody and their mother can see your transactions. Everybody. You sent $50 million worth of Bitcoin to some Spanish drug lord? Well, now everybody knows. Congratulations, you're going to prison. I'm kidding, obviously. Well, partially. This is how the blockchain works. Your transactions are validated by this sort of public bank, where a bunch of random people and their computers all around the world are able to see exactly how much money you send and receive. If you wanted to send 3 Bitcoin and you don't have those 3 Bitcoin in your possession, it'll be up to these random people looking at your public record of transactions to reject the transaction you want to make. And if you do have the 3 Bitcoin, then these random people will take a look at the blockchain, see that you do have the sufficient coins to make this transaction, and then send it over to the person receiving it. And yes, everyone will know that the receiver now has 3 extra Bitcoin in their account, because what is privacy? It's these random people that verify the legitimacy of every transaction. That is the blockchain. Whenever you own ownership of an NFT or sell one, it'll be on the blockchain. Everybody will know. But in all fairness, you don't need to provide legal information when creating your crypto wallet. So as long as there's no link between your wallet and your identity, your transactions will remain anonymous. Anyway, it's this blockchain system that keeps track of who has ownership over an NFT. The initial idea of a non-fungible token was to give artists an opportunity to sell their best works online as if they were physical. Upon purchase, the buyer would then have ownership over that work in the blockchain. Also, this is why right-clicking on NFTs don't do anything. NFTs are designed to give you something that can't be copied. Regardless of how many copies of an NFT you save by right-clicking, ownership of said NFT will still belong to the buyer. The original copy of that NFT lies within the blockchain. That's where the token's value comes from. The owner of an NFT can sell theirs for a hefty price but you're not going to be able to sell your copy of that same NFT you obtained through right-clicking. So if you're one of those people on Twitter that are like, heh, you spent thousands on this NFT, but I got it for free. Shut the fuck up. Please. It's not funny anymore. There are two main problems people have with NFTs. I mean, outside the money laundering and the fraud and the greedy companies eagerly wanting to hop on the trend. The fact that they're under the Ethereum blockchain and that they're so fucking ugly. Like some of them are so... These Bored Ape NFTs are the absolute worst. There's only about 10,000 of them justifying their value to a certain degree. Art NFTs are supposed to be unique pieces of art that can be sold from artists. But instead, someone made one Bored Ape and decided to make thousands of others with slightly different variations. But hey, at least people are making millions off these things, so maybe I'm just a little bit jealous. Although, at least I'm not a large contributing factor to greenhouse gas emissions.
why are NFTs so bad for the environment? Well, it's simply because NFTs are a part of the Ethereum blockchain. Ethereum is a cryptocurrency, like Bitcoin or Dogecoin. And just like other major cryptocurrencies, Ethereum is built on a system called Proof of Work, which uses a lot of power. Like, a lot. Proof of Work functions like a sort of security system for cryptocurrencies. In junction with the blockchain, Proof of Work keeps financial records secure by forcing people to solve these complex mathematical equations using beefy computers and other energy draining machines. Solving these equations allows people, aka miners, to add a new record of verified transactions to the blockchain. The miner will then get new tokens or transaction fees as a reward for their energy draining work. This process uses so much electricity you have no idea. Most of the time it's not even worth being a miner as the profit you make through mining will almost definitely be considerably less than how much you'll need to pay for your electricity bill. <laughs> Did you know that there's a fee associated with making <laughs> with making a transaction on Ethereum? <laughs> You'll never guess what it's called. Did you know Ethereum uses as much electricity as the entire country of Libya? It's fucking crazy. Are we really willing to accelerate the inevitable destruction of our planet at the expense of some digitalized monkeys? Okay, maybe I'm over-exaggerating a little bit. You would be 100% correct in saying that the people who create, purchase, or sell NFTs under Ethereum are partially responsible for the greenhouse emissions generated by miners. However, the real question is if it really matters in hindsight. We don't really know if NFTs are significantly increasing emissions from Ethereum or if they're just taking on the responsibility for emissions that would have been generated by those same miners anyway. Because without NFTs, miners would still be doing their thing at 100% capacity. In reality, NFTs are a relatively small portion of all Ethereum transactions. So to those that claim NFTs are destroying the planet, calm down. NFTs only take a small portion of the blame. Look at it this way. Planes release CO2 from burning fuel, meaning that air travel is contributing to greenhouse emissions. If you decide to take a holiday with a plane as your mode of transport, you're obviously responsible for a portion of its emissions. But if you never bought a ticket in the first place, that same plane still would have taken off with other passengers and produced the same greenhouse gas emissions anyway. So to see everybody point the finger at NFTs is so strange to me. And besides, there are alternatives to Ethereum. Not all NFTs work under Ethereum. For example, proof of stake, an alternative to the energy draining proof of work system that Ethereum uses, is a system where cryptocurrency owners can validate block transactions based on the number of coins or tokens a validator stakes. This completely reduces the amount of electrical power and computational power needed to verify transactions on the blockchain, since coin and token owners offer their assets for the chance to validate blocks. As to why Ethereum doesn't use proof of stake, I'll never know. Maybe it's less profitable to miners or some shit. I'm sure there's some sort of money related advantage to using proof of work compared to proof of stake, but is it really worth speeding up the planet's demise? I don't think it is.